Hi and welcome, I'm Jen, I'm the Gaming Mum and this video is a recap on what happened in BlizzConline 2021. Let's go! Now like I said in my pre-BlizzCon video, I haven't played WoW since early 2017. So I didn't pay too much attention to the WoW schedule but I did notice a few things. Now like usual at BlizzCon, WoW was talk talking about a patch update with stuff that seemed pretty good. However, it's still not enough to make me want to return to the game. There are various reasons I haven't, the main reason being life I guess, and that's a whole nother video. What was interesting however was the plans for Classic. Now I started playing WoW towards the end of Cataclysm, so I've never experienced Classic WoW, and I haven't tried Classic as that would require a subscription to WoW itself. I like the idea that they are giving the players a choice between staying on original base WoW forever or moving along through the expansions. Yes, that's right. Blizzard announced that they were adding the Burning Crusade expansion so you could go through the Dark Portal once more. I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, with the expansion you get the choice of two new races and classes, the Blood Elves, the Drain Eye, and the Shaman and the Paladin. Now, I do wonder though, how is this going to work moving forward? What expansion will Classic stop at? I wonder if it will be Wrath of the Lich Chicken, as apparently that is the most loved expansion. But at some point, Blizzard will need an endpoint for the Classic servers, or it's just going to catch up to the live version. As expected, Blizzard threw Overwatch 2 content fully in our faces. Now I loved the glimpses we saw of the two maps, New York and Rome. They looked insanely fun to explore, and the designers have made them absolutely beautiful. If there is one thing that Blizzard have always been good at, it's world creation, in my opinion anyway. Now if I went into as much detail as I wanted on Overwatch 2, this video would probably end up far too long. So I'm just going to summarise here. PvP looks highly interesting. Now in Overwatch done, I've barely done any PvP, as quite frankly it's a bit boring. However, it does seem to have a lot more going for it in Overwatch 2. The hero missions are going to tell us more about the world Overwatch is set in, and this should have been in at the very beginning in Overwatch. The one thing the game was missing was all the lore right at the beginning when the game launched. We also found out that they have designed these missions as co-op missions, aimed at those who don't want to play competitively. To me, that's a little odd, but I can see why. They want to pull in more to their player base. The missions are designed to level up your heroes. And yes, that is correct. We level them up. And the plan is that none of these missions will feel like you're grinding. Now the same maps as usual game modes will be used. However, it could have a different route or a whole new different area will open up. They're also planning on including various weather conditions as well as time of day which gives you a lot of opportunities in different ways to attack enemies or NPCs. They also showed off some improved character designs. These included Reaper, McCree, Pharaoh and Widowmaker. They look pretty good to me. They also commented a lot on the enemy design. They've been experimenting with enemies to make them do different things and react more, brand new versions of enemies completely, for them to have weak spots and so much more. The new enemy types will give us new things to think about and new ways to play the game as we progress through these missions. The game looks incredible, but the two things that Blizzard didn't offer that everyone was talking about and hoping for, there was no beta and no release date. Jeff Kaplan said after to IGN that it would definitely not be any time soon, not even this year. That's slightly concerning as they didn't talk about the original Overwatch at all, other than to say that the whole team are pretty much working on Overwatch 2. Now, Overwatch is a great game, but it's ha not had any content, and skins re in rehashed events don't count in my opinion, since Echo was released. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, I was so excited to hear about Diablo. Like I thought, the panels went in depth into the development of Diablo 4 and also Diablo Mortal, the mobile game, which I'll talk about a bit later. 
We know from the financial earnings call that Diablo wasn't coming this year, so it looks like 2022 at the earliest, though I do wonder if it is more likely 2023. The Diablo panels went in depth on the newly revealed Rogue class, which looks absolutely awesome. We also got a sneak peek at the Druid 2 and a glimpse of the Barbarian and the Sorceress again. Now their aim is to make the Rogue a flexible class so you can tinker with it to suit your playstyle. The trailer also showed how much darker in theme the game will be, which suits me perfectly fine. The game does look absolutely beautiful from the trailer of the Rogue. And the class is interesting too. It looks like a cross between the demon hunter and an assassin. They also mention PvP. Now, I'm not a PvP player on any game. It usually frustrates me as usually someone with a faster computer or console and faster internet. And where I live, that's much more commonplace than you think. They will get to you before you even spot them. Now, PvP in Diablo 4 is going to be contained to fields of hatred areas. There will be events in these areas, but you also have to watch your back as another player could decide you look too good to eat, as in this area you will collect shards of hatred, which can then be purified and spent at a special vendor. It's high risk for high reward. I love the fact that if you don't want to, you never have to take your character into the fields of hatred and you can avoid PvP completely. It also has the mechanic that if someone kills too many players, they will become something called a Vessel of Hatred and they will become visible to everyone on the map and become a moving target for everyone to see. Now I could go on and on about stuff shown in Diablo 4, but I need to talk about Diablo Immortal. Now, I know most people hated on this, so did I. And I really didn't like how pushy Blizzard were at BlizzCon for it. But it doesn't look too bad. The fact that they're marketing it as a mobile MMO is really interesting, as that genre is highly popular at the moment, with Genshin Impact for example. I'm also very curious as to how it will work in practice as well, as to what devices you will need to play it on. They aim for it to have voice chat, public events, and dedicated dungeons to take on with your friends. Now, the technical alpha previously did introduce four-person dungeons that have been previously mentioned, which I do think sounds promising. They also mentioned that in the technical alpha, voice chat was not just contained to party chat. In fact, it went bigger than that. It could be used in public channels too. You can leave voice memos around the world and the in-game translator will translate it and put it into the game. And if it's clicked on, it will broadcast your message. Now, I do think this could be abused if it makes it to the live version, but it's a pretty cool feature nonetheless. Guilds were also mentioned, and this makes total sense to have in this mobile game, and I think it will be a good addition. It doesn't really work as intended in Diablo 3, for example. Blizzard have also designed it to be played in short bursts, so you don't need to be plugged in permanently for hours so your battery doesn't die. This is good for our battery longevity. Overall, I think it actually looks really interesting, even if it wasn't what we as Blizzard fans originally wanted. Now, I'll be keeping an eye on its development, that's for sure. It was said that it should be releasing this year, but since it's only just had a technical alpha, I assume it'll be closer to Christmas release time if everything goes according to plan. Of course, we can't talk about Diablo without talking about the announcement of Diablo 2 Remastered. I was only a teenager when Diablo 2 was released in 2000, and video games were heavily sanctioned in my home growing up. I didn't get the chance to play it the first time around, though it had been totally played the hell out of. As one of the games I was able to play sporadically was Neverwinter Nights when it launched in 2002. The fact Diablo 2 is 20 years old and they've managed to make it look updated is pretty amazing. I also love the fact that it will have cross progression between PCs and consoles. It just looks beautiful and definitely something I'll probably get on my Xbox and probably the Switch too. The big surprise from Blizzard was the Blizzard Arcade Collection. Now to help celebrate the 20 years of Blizzard Entertainment, right at the beginning of BlizzCon Online, Blizzard announced the Arcade Collection. This is three of their classic console games, Blackthorn, The Lost Vikings and Rock and Roll Racing. The collection includes both original editions of the games and a definitive edition, 
This adds in to the original some upgrades, such as enhanced multiplayer for the Lost Vikings and Rock and Roll Racing, new music, new maps, and localization for 12 different languages. It was launched as soon as it was announced on PC and consoles for around the £19.99p mark. Blizzard also said that if you bought any of their 30 year collection bundles on any platform, you would get the arcade collection for free. Now I think that makes the collection bundles a lot much better priced. So what do I think about this BlizzCon or BlizzCon Online? Now I don't think it was too bad in all honesty. Sure, there's been better BlizzCons and no release or beta dates for Overwatch 2 or Diablo 4 other than the whole not this year as was confirmed later. But we did find out that there is new content coming, whether as it's a patch for WoW or as a whole new game for the Diablo franchise. And of course, the Blizzard Arcade Collection was a complete surprise. Considering how difficult it must have been for them over the past year to work remotely on these remakes or even brand new games in their franchises, I don't think this was too bad at all. Also, did anyone pick up what was said by Jay Allen Brack? I'm pretty sure he hinted about brand new IPs coming to Blizzard, which he said more information would be later provided. Now I wonder what they could be. Did you watch BlizzCon online this year? What was your favourite part or announcement? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.